Welcome to Almost Here, Around the Corner of Future Technology podcast with Richard Jacobs. Future technologies poised to transform our lives for better or worse are the focus of this podcast. Almost Here means these technologies are now here and starting to be used or just around the corner from Bitcoin to artificial intelligence, 3D printing, blockchain, virtual reality, and more. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Future Tech Podcast. I'm your host, Juliet Lamar, and joining us today is Gavin Douglas. He is the CEO and co-founder at iPowwow. Welcome, Gavin. Hi, Juliet. How are you? Fantastic, Gavin. Thank you so much for coming on the show today. I know our listeners are very excited to listen to and hear all about iPowwow. So uh, why don't you kick us off with giving us an overview about what iPowwow is? Sure. Um, So iPowwow was created basically because uh, I spent 15 years as a television producer, editor, script writer, and uh, director. Um, started in London in 1996, which is where the genesis of the idea for iPowwow started in, late, in, the, in the late 90s. Um, I was working for a television production company in South London, and they were trying to make a TV show interactive. So we had you know, the host, Oprah Winfrey style, in the studio, and a guest, Brad Pitt, let's say, in the studio and 5,000 little plastic boxes in 5,000 houses on uh, the end of 5,000 telephone lines, essentially, uh, with little plastic buttons on each box, A, B, C, D. (laughs) And the idea was that host in the studio would ask the audience for the first time ever um, what they should ask the guest, whether it's, you know, about his new movie, about his marriage, about where all his money goes, about the kids. um, And the audience would press A, B, C, or D, and the lights in the studio would flash, and the conversation would change instantly. So real-time feedback from thousands of people watching the show into the studio. Um, obviously, it didn't work because it was the late 90s and the uh, engineering wasn't up to scratch at the time. And so we all lost our jobs. Uh, and when I went off to work for the BBC for a while. I made some shows for them uh, and then went to Australia, made some shows there, uh, like Mythbusters and Big Brother and So You Think You Dance and um, all the other kind of nice nice reality shows and a um, bit of sports and news ended up in LA um, I met a group of engineers um, who had a cloud platform and in the back of my mind 15 years making television shows had been this constant urge to try and get back to that initial idea which was to get the viewers of the show into the studio in some shape or form in real time because all we've had since then was you know text to vote or, or phone to vote and then we'll tell you next week well, who wants to wait till next week? We want, we want it now, right? So um, I sat down with the engineers in 2010 and uh, who are now the iPowwow senior team of engineers. And we came up with a little platform where um, we had little red and green buttons on my iPhone or everybody's iPhone. If you could click, click on the yes and no, it would take the, uh, the results through the cloud platform onto a television screen at the far end of the room. And it would move the graphic on TV. And the hairs went up on my arms, literally. I, got, I just had that gut feeling that this was, this was it. Um, and so we raised $3 million, moved the company to Venice Beach, California, went to see ESPN and Fox Sports. And since 2011, we've been the leaders in participation TV, is what we call it, where uh, the, exactly that, the host in the studio asks the audience at home a question, um, whether it's trivia, whether it's opinion-based, whether it's political, whether it's sports-related, and the audience are able to use their uh, smartphone, clearly with graphics and all the exciting bells and whistles that we're able to do now instead of plastic boxes with plastic buttons, and uh, aggregate those results second by second and put them back on the TV studio to give the producers and the hosts of the television show the ability to run interactivity in real time with their audience. Um, and so we work with pretty much everybody, NBC, ABC, CBS, ESPN, CNN, you know, the list is endless. It's every single network in America we've, we've worked with over the last six or seven years. Um, what happened was that last year we started getting into first screen tech. So rather than the big TV screen on the wall and you have to force the audience or drive the audience to you know, put their beer down and pick up their phone and actually start playing <laughs> the game or, or answer the question, we started doing first screen instead, laying graphics, interactive graphics over video on your phone. So you're watching on the phone, you're interacting on the phone. And you're watching on your laptop, you're interacting on your laptop. And we've been doing that now with Facebook Live and Twitch and Red Bull Esports for a couple of years. Um, and we, 
the, the blockchain, the advent of the blockchain um, and ICOs last year really caught our interest. We've been watching what had been happening for a few years, but really end of last year, it started to crystallize in our minds that what we had as a platform on television, where we were giving points to, to viewers for interacting, for getting things right and wrong, was actually a token system, but the points were dead. You know, right? They weren't alive like, uh, like tokens can be alive. They accrue value across time. They have data and have metadata. They have history. That's what tokens. That's why tokens are so um, such an, an amazing piece of technology that we can use. So what we did over the last four or five months in 2018 is begin to shift our um, business model and our platform from being a TV interactive platform uh, used by TV producers into uh, migrate onto the blockchain um, and start to tokenize television. So instead of giving viewers points, we are going to be giving them hit tokens, which are worth money. So literally, Juliet, you will be paid for watching your favorite show. What, what is your favorite show? At the moment, because Game of Thrones is not out again yet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, and I've given up on Westworld because season two is just, they're losing me. I'm not interested anymore. Um, I've enough. been really liking the, the Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. Wow. Okay. So imagine at the, yeah. at the end of the first, well, let's say the first episode of the week that you watch, a little graphic will pop up. Uh, if it's on your TV screen, you'll have to get your second screen out, your phone, and click on the button and say, yes, I'd like to have my five hits in my account. Um, uh, if, it's on, if you're watching it on your laptop or on your phone, then you simply click on the graphic and it automatically drops into your hit account. Those hits that you're now earning just for watching your favorite show, you can use those uh, for a number of different things. Um, you can hold on to them because... That's what um, you, you know, most cryptocurrencies you can hold uh, or exchange. You can take them to the digital shopping plaza where there'll be uh, a Best Buy, a Target, a, an ESPN shop, a Star Wars shop, and you can buy either digital assets like screensavers or reduced ad loads, let's say, on the next first, uh, episode of Mrs. Maisel. Or you can buy um, a bike for your niece's birthday, um, all based on the fact that you're watching your favorite TV show. Now, obviously, there's going to be levels to this. So if you were to uh, watch a TV commercial and that was attached to the HITS uh, platform, then you would be able to earn more HITS for, for watching a TV commercial. If you watch five episodes of Mrs. Maisel in a row, you get uh, a, a multiplier effect of HITS into your account. And all of this will be run and paid for by all, our, our old friends, the advertisers, because the, it's the advertisers that are driving, uh, still driving, uh, whether you like it or not, uh, media, entertainment, content uh, in the world. Uh, nothing comes for free and somebody has to pay for it. And that, that's, you know, that's the reality of, of where we are. So we've, uh, in the process of building this platform and, and creating the HIT token, we've uh, signed strategic partnerships with some of the biggest advertising uh, holding companies and advertising agencies in the world because we already worked with them in our previous business model and our previous platform because uh, we put their logos on TV and make them part of the interactive process. Now we're working with them to shape the way that the HIT token works um, on, on the platform for the future. That, that's fantastic because there's so much, you know, unplugging, like with this, with the new generation coming up, I've, I don't have a TV. I haven't had a TV since I was like 19 because Right. I don't sit down and watch TV in my home. I'm too busy. Um, I have better things to do. And, it, you know, I'm not going to be sitting down at a specific time. And I think that finally advertisers and um, co different TV companies are realizing, you know, with their on-demand streaming services that we're not going to sit down when they tell us to. And then with Hulu and Netflix and, <laughs> you know, HBO now, we can, skip all of the, we can skip all the ads. And so right. they really have to get creative with how they are showing us what they want to show us. Um, do you get more hit tokens if you watch a commercial? Because I feel I feel like you should. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, that's that would definitely the intention is that if the commercial is there and you click on it and watch it, that you will earn hits for your time and attention, basically. Um, so yeah. for shows, I wonder is it is is your metric like for shows that are not quite as popular, maybe they have more tokens that you can earn or shows that, that maybe are more difficult to watch. Like Handmaid's Tale is another one of my absolute favorites. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, you know, everyone's watching Handmaid's Tale, but maybe not everyone is watching, uh, you know, something else. Would there be incentives of saying, oh, watch the show, earn 
you know, five times the amount of hit tokens as if you watched Handmaid's Tale. You, you should be working on our product team. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yes and yes. So the, 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 not only can the advertisers use it in order to get a direct um, relationship with the viewer or, or the consumer, but also the networks themselves who create the programs and then distribute the programs either on linear TV on the wall, which you don't have, or anywhere else that you get your content. And so they, they, they're looking at using this as a marketing tool or a tune-in, a driver of tune-in, they call it, because they want to drive people to tune into a different show on the back of mm-hmm. the show they're already watching. So exactly that. Yeah, we'll, we'll be doing both of those things. Yeah, the only reason I saw Marvelous Mrs. Maisel is I see the advertisements all around my neighborhood, and then finally someone told me word of mouth, and I eventually watched it. But, you know, cash speaks. So if you're offering tokens for, for people to go watch it, they will be much more apt to watch it sooner. That's the plan. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so, that's the plan. So, so do we really have free choice anymore? <laughs> I don't think we ever did, do we? But, <laughs> but, but, but um, seriously, do we have any free choice? This, the vision of what we're trying to do here with the HIT protocol is to give the viewers back a bit more choice, right? So, um, I mean, in one sense, right now, there is a plethora of choice, right? You can go down your list of uh, available shows on different uh, sources, from now till Christmas and still not watch everything from now next Mm -hmm. hundred years. Um, What we're doing is because in order to get the hits, you have to be logged in and you have to consent to it, you know, following GDPR consent laws. um, The viewer knows because we're doing that, how their data is going to be used, right? We're not backdooring them. We're not putting cookies on them. We're not tracking them in any nefarious or shady or dark way. They know that their data, because they're watching the show and they want hits, click, got the hits, thank you very much. Their data is now being used by that, that TV show to either improve the viewing experience or make sure that a brand that they are interested in pops up the next time. It's that kind of um, three-way triangle between the viewer, the distributor, and the advertiser that we're trying to make more harmonious, if you like, and less kind of threatening and big brotherish. Absolutely. And, you know, when targeted advertising or show, show suggestion is done right, I don't mind it at all because, yeah. you know, I don't right. want to sort through 100 shows and try to guess what I might like and watch 10 minutes and be disappointed. I don't want to do that. You know, I want someone to say, you like Handmaid's Tale. You might also like, you know, this show. Um, so right. when it's done properly, it, it actually is more helpful than the cut to the customer than not having it there, as well as, you know, you're earning, you're earning tokens. tokens. Absolutely right. Yeah, it's using technology for what technology is supposed to be used for, which is making our life easier, funnier, and more, you know, more exciting. <laughs> what are some of the biggest uh, challenges that you've encountered throughout the years uh, with, with this? Um, so the biggest challenges, obviously, to start with, was that nobody, nobody was going to build this platform for interactivity, where you could have mm-hmm. live, live, live. So yeah, 15 years was a long time to wait to find a, a group of engineers who yeah. could not not just do it, but had the right bits in place. And we had to wait, obviously, for Steve Jobs and his iPhone to pop up. And we had to make sure cloud platforms weren't weren't just a myth and were actually going to be working properly in 2009 and 10. Um, and then the the, the normal business uh, challenges of working with large broadcasters like ESPN and CNN and, you know, the especially the last two or three years of the, our, our, our standard business model, if you like, was working with the TV networks. And they, they're big and they're brutal. And, you you know, you get involved in a reorganization from the top to the bottom of a major media corporation and everybody, including us, gets spat out the side and then reworked and brought in on another level and you have to work with a new team. And, you know, we're certainly not complaining about it because it's been a roller coaster of excitement and we're still here. But it's... Uh, it's not for the faint-hearted, I don't think, becoming a, an interactive or a technology vendor for large television corporations. Um, if I'd known then what I know now, I would have done it slightly differently, I think. Um, but <laughs> we we got through it, and we're now setting sail in this new direction, you know, migrating all of our tech onto the blockchain or our blockchain, um, tokenizing the the video and TV that we that we know is is available both online and on the wall. Um, so yeah, we're taking all of our, our failures and our mistakes and our experiences and uh, with us so we don't make them again. No, absolutely. And and you really are taking on a huge endeavor, you know, tech 
on its own and the entertainment industry on its own are both such huge players and you're trying to merge them and make them play nice. It's always going to be a little difficult. But in the end, I, I really think people are going to enjoy this. I can see it being used, obviously, in sports because we already use it for sports. Um, but, you know, mm. in political debates and, and things like that where people are so incredibly passionate and instead of mm. yelling at your yelling at your smartphone or your laptop or your TV, you can actually have your voice heard on a bigger a bigger level. Right. Yeah. And get paid for it. Exactly. <laughs> Everyone likes to <laughs> and get then paid. Take, yeah. And take take those tokens and use them in different ways. I mean, we're contemplating, you know, being able to donate hit tokens to uh, disaster relief funds on news outlets. We're, we're looking at the ability to use those tokens to vote for your favorite singer on a, on a, on a reality show. We're using you know, we're, all the things that we've been doing for six or seven years. We're, we're putting in the pipeline as products for TV producers to use these hits to enhance the kind of the excitement of the interactivity with the audience. Because no, in, I, in the I, end, I, the only the only people in the end, the only people that really matter are the audience, the viewers. Right. If 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 the, if the story doesn't work on TV or on on your smartphone or wherever you're watching it, you won't watch it. If it's boring, you won't watch it. If it's if the tech that's trying to make it interactive doesn't work or is boring, you'll just dump the whole thing and start somewhere else. If the second by second interaction with that content somehow gets glitchy or is again boring and isn't a great uh, story or a narrative, you're out. Right. So the only the only, we we focus so hard on the only person that matters, and that's you. Right. The viewer. Um, everything else fail, fades into you know the background, the tech, the the massive budgets, the advertising, sponsors, you know, jumping on over each other, trying to get on, onto the screen. What really matters is how you get to feel at the end of that two minute sequence or that five minute sequence or that one hour TV show. That's all that really counts. No, ab- absolutely. And I know just from for me, if something like boring, I can maybe handle for a little bit because I'll try to see the good in it and maybe look at it from first perspective. But if things are at all difficult to use or annoy me in any way, it's it's over. <laughs> right. If something's technically boring or difficult, like setting up a crypto wallet to put some um, oh my gosh, coins it's so in. annoying <laughs> and stressful. Well, yeah, like, but, is someone but, hacking but me right are... now? Did they see my coins? <laughs> right. Which is why there's 120 companies building front ends that are going to make it really easy to do, so that everybody can do it really. Really, and it's going to be enjoyable, and there's going to be flashing lights, and it's going to look like Vegas. It's going to be great. <laughs> but we're not um, doing that. We're just going to we're just going to give you tokens for watching your favorite television show. That's so much less annoying to me. <laughs> but that is a, that right. is a good point that that, that I had to I had to get around to was that um, we are going to make because the viewers are so important, and it has to be seamless and it has to be fun. We're going to make this whole process. Totally smooth and seamless. You won't even know that it's a cryptocurrency. You won't know it's the blockchain. You won't know anything. It's just going to be your favorite show. Nice little graphic pops up at the right time uh, for the right, right amount of time with the right words on it. You click on it, the hits drop into your account. Sometime later, you go to your profile and you get to spend them and use them. It's going to be that simple. Otherwise, we're back to the, the problem we just talked about, which is boring, annoying, and frustrating, which isn't good. No. Well, I'm, I'm excited to, to learn more about this with, uh, with actually using it. Uh, do you have a prototype out? Can people start using this? Um, and, and if so, how do people follow your journey and see what you're all about? Um, so you can, in, the, in terms of following us and finding us, um, you can check out iPowWow, which is I-P-O-W-O-W, um, on all of the usual places. Um, we've got a lot of Medium posts up. Uh, we've got tele- Telegram, uh, Facebook, Twitter. And if you want to contact me directly, it's G Douglas at ipowwow.com. And that's I-P-O-W-O-W. Fantastic. And can people start using this now, soon? Uh, the the iPowwow system itself, you can see it pop up on TV shows around the country from time to time. But the actual uh-huh. HIT protocol and the HIT token is, is in beta right now. Um, uh-huh. So we'll be in beta for probably most of the fall working with the advertisers and the brands and the networks and making it, you know, shaping, shaping it the way it needs to be shaped so that the viewers find it exciting. Wonderful. Well, Gavin, and we'll, thank and we'll, you so much for we'll joining us here today. And, yeah, keep us posted. And, and thanks for joining us. This is such an exciting topic and, and something that the majority of people will end up using and seeing 
very soon. That's what we're trusting. Thanks a lot for the time. <laughs> really appreciate it. Absolutely. That is Gavin Douglas. He is the CEO and co-founder at iPowell. Thank you all so much for tuning in. This has been Juliette Lamar with Future Tech Podcast. You have been listening to Almost Here, Around the Corner of Future Technology Podcast with Richard Jacobs. Subscribe to this podcast, both to review, to discover more future technologies that are poised to transform our lives for better or worse, such as Bitcoin, artificial intelligence, 3D printing, blockchain, virtual reality, and more.